This is Sperry. Sperry conducted split brain research in 1968. If you have trouble remembering that, remember Sperry, split brain. Now, before we jump into the research, we need to learn a little bit about the background. The brain is composed of two cerebral hemispheres, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. The left side of the brain is responsible for logic, language and reasoning. The right side of the brain is responsible for creativity, imagination and intuition. These hemispheres are connected in the brain by the corpus callosum, a large band of white matter which is efficient at sending information. The corpus callosum may be severed by surgeons in order to reduce the symptoms of epilepsy. This procedure is called a commissurotomy. One day, Sperry thought to himself, Hmm, can I show independent streams of conscious awareness possessed by each hemisphere and show how each hemisphere has its own memory? So he decided to conduct some research and that became his aim. For his design, he used a quasi-experiment with naturally occurring independent variables. To do this, he used a lab environment with control conditions with an independent measures design. Of course, it's no experiment without participants, so Sperry made 11 friends and went on his merry way. As part of his procedure for visual tasks, Sperry used a tachistoscope to present visual stimuli to the participants. But what is it? Tachistoscope. Well, I googled it and apparently it's an instrument used for exposing objects to the eye for a very brief measured period of time. The tachistoscope has a focal point in the middle and two areas where stimuli is presented. The participants using the tachistoscope would have one eye covered and were instructed to stare at the focal point. All visual stimuli was presented for only 0.1 seconds. This was another control as it is too quick for eye movements to cause visual information to enter both visual fields. In the tactile test, participants would put their hands under the tachistoscope so they could reach the objects but not see them. Objects placed in the right hand of the participant are processed in the left hemisphere and vice versa. For the visual task results, Sperry found that participants would only recognise stimuli if the stimuli was presented again to the same visual field. If participants were shown stimuli in the right visual field, but then shown the same stimuli to the left visual field, they would claim that they have not seen it before. As for the tactile task results, objects placed in the right hand could be described in speech or writing. If the same objects were placed in the left hand, participants could only make wild guesses and often seem unaware that they were holding anything. Also, objects could only be recognised again if they were held again in the same hand. Sperry made three conclusions in this study, the first being that people with split brains have two separate visual inner worlds, each with its own train of visual images. The second being split brain patients have a lack of cross integration where the second hemisphere does not know what the first hemisphere has been doing. Finally, in his third conclusion, Sperry states that split brain patients seem to have two independent streams of consciousness, each with its own memories, perceptions and impulses, i.e. two minds in one body. My name is Bradley Rogers and that was Sperry's split brain study in two minutes. Thank you for watching.